It's known as the land of song. It's a country that boasts stunning coastlines, valleys and mountains. Think leeks, daffodils and the green, green grass of home. Yes, it's Wales' turn to take centre stage for the latest rounds of the Motorsport UK British Rallycross Championship Five Nations Trophy presented by Cooper Tyres because we're at the legendary circuit that is Pembrey. So Hill there after his joker is sitting right behind Steve Hill and now Ovenden goes joker on the penultimate lap then. So not quite as late as I thought he might do. Comes out though as Steve Hill collects some tyres going through there as he goes into the joker lap. But crucially the number 72 of Ovenden is into the race lead as he emerges from the joker into the left hander of cart as they go and Toehill is all over the rear wing of the 72 of Ovenden like a bad rash. Down the straight they go. Is he going to be able to find his way through? O'Donovan there on the back foot. Godfrey trying to find his way through up the inside of the Ford Fiesta. Not able to find his way past as they come down the speedway straight and head in towards the Brooklyn's hairpin for the first time. So it's advantage O'Donovan from Godfrey then as it sits coming in towards the end of the first lap. But Godfrey, you know he's not going to take that line down as they come in towards the faster section. Let's see whether he is going to be able to do anything but it's the number four, Steve Hill, in the Mitsubishi Evo that leads the way, coming through the first series of corners, followed by Toe Hill then, and then it's Mark Donnelly who's right on the back of the man in second position of Derek Toehill. So let's see whether the reigning champion of Donnelly in the Citroen DS3 is going to be able to do anything. It's still Julian Godfrey smoke pouring from the back of his Ford Fiesta. And if he's able to keep going, well, that is going to be very impressive indeed. He comes through the final sector of the lap, the number 20, over the timing line to take the win in Q2, Heat 2. It's a very hot day here at Pembrey. And here comes uh, down the inside. Bellamy on, she rolls it. She's over. Drew Bellamy goes over at the hairpin at Brooklands. There was a yellow flag out because Ryan Andrews' car was stopped outside of there. Bellamy up and out of the car very quickly indeed. Crucially, she's up and OK. But that was a very big, nasty impact there for Drew Bellamy. Lights out and blast off. Good start then from Tony Lynch off the front row of the grid in the Toyota Rem R2. That rear engine, rear drive car getting a stop from a launch ahead of the number 50 of Steve Cousins. Then comes the 74 of Terry Moore behind the wheel of the Austin Mini, but it's the top two, the MR2 of Tony Lynch and Steve Cousins that lead the way, but Lynch goes round. He loops it on the wet part of the dirt. That circuit has just been watered. And well, that is a big disaster. It's on the final lap we are now with Steve Cousins leading the way 2.4 seconds ahead of Terry Moore and then Tony Lynch. Three wins in three heats, and now as he comes through the s bends for the final time and across the timing line, it is Steve Cousins who wins the Retro Rallycross class here for round three. Let's see who's going to get the drag down towards the first corner. It's going to be the Porsche 911 of Barry Stewart who starts on pole position, but the fast starting uh, Ford Escort gets away very nicely indeed as they come down in towards the first series of corners. So it is going to be the 166 of Stewart that leads the way. They now get ready to start the final lap. So it's Stewart from Bristow from Tapscott. And look up the inside there as well. Is Ray Morgan trying to find his way through on Nigel Davey for fourth position. Not able to find his way past is the number 114. And Davey holds on to fourth base as it stands. Alan Tapscott really has the bit between his teeth coming in towards the final lap now then. So it's the top three. But what can we say about Barry Stewart? He started this race from pole position and he has looked calm, comfortable and collected out there on track. And he is about to come over the timing line to claim the chequered flag just ahead of Vince Bristow, ahead of Alan Tapscott, who finishes in third place. And then it's Nigel Davey and Ray Morgan completing the five car strong grid. Green light to go then for the RX 150s. So we come down towards the first corner. It's the number 19 of Jones then on the inside. So Steve Jones gets the lead of the race away. Lots of Argy Bargy coming through the second part then of the first lap. No opportunity presenting itself there. Going Joker then does Stephen Jones. So it's now a two-way battle between O'Donovan and between Caldwell for the race lead on this final lap then. Side by side we are nearly then and it's Patrick O'Donovan on the defensive then from Tommy Caldwell. Very close indeed between them. Is Caldwell going to have an opportunity down the back straight? Not quite as it stands because a great drive out of there for Patrick O'Donovan down in towards the left-hander we go. And a 
again in the number 13 of O'Donovan who has the advantage. He's looked calm, he's looked comfortable throughout the course of this race and despite not having a good day so far here at Pembrey, he comes across the line to take the win in the final. Lights out and we go green. Good start then off the front row for Max Langmate side by side as well as they come down in towards the first corner with uh, the number uh, 10 of Watt then. So uh, Watt, the 110 of Watt is in second position with Max Langmate now leading the way. So good start then from those drivers as they make their way through into the series of S Benz followed by the rest of the field as they come through. Looks like Finley Scott got away pretty well. He's up into fourth position and and a problem there for Corey Paget who has stopped out on track. The number 326 has not gone well at all for him in any way, shape or form. A shame for Max Watt, he'll be disappointed with that. But look at this battle going on on the final lap between uh, Finley Scott and Caitlin May. Those two running nose to tail as they come in towards the final bend. Over the timing line comes Max Langmay to take the chequered flag and it's very close indeed for fourth position as well. Owen Robbins comes home second. Finley Scott though I think is going to finish ahead of Caitlin May. He is in uh, so Caitlin May does finish ahead of Finley Scott according to my timing screen here. So May finishes on the podium in the final. Green lights and go. Good start then from Bleasdale. Great launch also from Bellamy off the outside and she leads. Paige Bellamy leads into the first corner from Bleasdale from Volley who gets no room given to him at all. Lee Keeler bringing up the rear in uh, fourth position then in this race and sadly we didn't get to see John Ward in this one. The Irishman uh, making his return to the Five Nations British Rallycross Championship and Volok very deep into the brakes on the hairpin bend there and it was their contact. I don't think there was. I think he just might have outbraked himself coming into that corner and either way, well that is a, a nasty end to the race there for Slamir Volok come down the back straight looking how fast that BMW is and there's just nothing that Keeler can do so Volok gets himself back into third position he'll be pretty pleased with that following the earlier mistakes that he made just a couple more corners separating her from the win of round three in the final of the Five Nations British Rallycross Championship Bellamy comes over the line in the Super National category to win green lights on and go good start then from the pole sitter of David Bell as they come down towards the first corner keep an eye on the outside there for the number three that's Adrian Turner he's now on the inside of the 35 of uh, Martin Hawks as they come through the Super 1600s coming to some trouble as well there with Darren Scott having stopped at the first corner so that is not good at all for the number 25 who has driven brilliantly so far here today in the Super 1600s class. Now that means the leader in the Super 1600s is going to be Craig Lomax behind the wheel of his brand new Citroen C1. But work to do then for Darren Scott as he has got to recover his way through the field. I'm sure we'll see lots of exciting racing action as the season continues on. But over the line and taking the win is David Bell in the number 93. All four mini ahead of Martin Hawks ahead of Adrian Turner. Then it is the first of the Super 1600 cars in the form of Darren Scott, followed by Phil Chicken, who will finish in second position, and then Craig Lomax, who will finish third in class, sixth overall in that race. And we are away, it's Luke Constantine, then who gets the advantage as they come down towards that first corner, James Constantine in there, as well as Don McLeod, not too far away as they come through in towards the right-hander, and it looks like it's uh, Don McLeod then, who's got himself up into second position. So brilliant stuff there. So Luke Constantine in the number six in the pink machine, leads the way as they come through the right-hander, then the left, then the right again, and then into the hairpin bend we go. Going for the joker then goes Max Weatherly, so he hadn't made his joker on the first lap, just had a very slow first lap in the race. And now he goes joker then, so he does move out. But look at how close it is on the emergence between himself and James Constantine in that battle for second place. So it's now Luke Constantine that has the advantage and did James Constantine get the better of Max Weatherly? No, he did not. So out of the hairpin they go, down the speedway straight and in towards Brooklands for the final time. It's advantage to the number 23 of Max Weatherly as they come down in towards the hairpin bend. So Luke Constantine is going to take the chequered flag and finish up a very impressive day in round three of the Five Nations British Rallycross Championship ahead of Max Weatherly, ahead of James Constantine. And you can see O'Donovan now coming under pressure from Tristan Abenden there as well as they flick it through in towards the uh, left-hander, locking the rear wheels and problems there for Roger Thomas behind the wheel of the number 95 and he's had some dramas as he spins the car around, tries to get it facing on the straight and narrow and he's just about able to do so. I wonder whether he might have had some mechanical problems earlier on but I wonder if he might have had a helping hand there with uh, Mark Donnelly. But Julian Godfrey's on his inside then, so coming through into the left-hander, 
and then the right hander we go and it is Steve Hill who's coming under all sorts of pressure now from Godfrey we can see through our commentary position that it's really close indeed between them side by side they come down the back straight into Brooklyn's we go Godfrey on the inside Hill on the outside Godfrey's up the inside and he's through into the race lead Julian Godfrey takes the lead on the penultimate lap here at Pembrey for round three in Q2 fantastic driving there from Godfrey look up in the air if you can't hear it already because there's a fantastic flying formation overhead.